watching SKST Radio. Well, hello. Welcome to SKST Radio. You are tuned in to One on One Entertainment with Cammie Grayson and Friends. And today I have a special friend. Her name is Tara Violet. Tara is a cinematographer and she's going to tell us all about her great life and how she got started. Hello, Tara. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for being a part of the show. I couldn't wait to meet you. It's like, oh, I miss her. I want to meet her. (laughs) Tell the audience about yourself and how you got started. First, let's start off with your parents. Tara has very important parents. Come on, Tara. Um, Where to start? Uh, Let's see. Um, My mom, Karen Robson, is pretty cool. She was in a film when she was a teenager that's a cult classic, Picnic at Hanging Rock. And then she went on to become an entertainment lawyer. So she's been working in film for a while, kind of on the business side. And then my father, Ramin Niami, who I shot this film, I Without a Face With, is an indie filmmaker. He used to be a film teacher when I was a kid and before I was born. And so I grew up around film and the arts and so it was kind of like inevitable that i'd end up doing this right right so okay so now so you grew up with all this great background how did you decide to become a cinematographer opposed to being an actress or a writer or a director um i guess i got into photography when i was in high school when I was about 14, I had this incredible teacher at my school, Harris Hartsfield, who taught me how to shoot on film and print in the darkroom, old school style. Mm -hmm. And he was really supportive of me and I got really, really into photography. So I was doing photography and then I started to make my own short films, like in college, taking film classes. And I really enjoyed making moving images. And It's not that I'm not interested in directing or other things, but I just love telling stories with images. And it's really fun to work with directors and bring their stories to life visually, which is basically what a cinematographer does. You're like the right-hand person of the director bringing their vision to life through the camera and lighting and all that jazz. So that's kind of how I ended up there. I just sort of made the jump into film, although I'm still a photographer also. Are you you there? Yeah, I'm here. We froze up a few minutes there. So I was asking the question, how does that actually work with the the, the director? How does that work? So basically, um, as a cinematographer, I read the script and talk to the director about the script, like what the story is about, who the characters are, what the emotions are, what kind of genre it is what the conflict is, you know, what what the movie is about. And they communicate to me how they want it to look and feel. So maybe, you know, say it's a comedy, which this one isn't, it's very dark. Mm -hmm. But if it was a comedy, they might be like, I want it to be cute and fun and bright colors. And, you know, the character is having a lot of fun. I want people to laugh. So I kind of take that and think of like, how can I move the camera or use lighting to make people feel that way? So, for example, on this movie, Eye Without a Face, you know, we talked about what the movie is about, that it's this thriller with horror elements. And I looked at other movies like that and figured out, okay, if I move the camera like this, if I use shadows here, this will be creepy. This will make people feel a certain way. So you're kind of like translating the vision of the director. And mm-hmm. ideally, your work is invisible. Like, people don't notice it. They just feel it. You know what wow. I mean? Like, they feel the emotion. They don't go, oh, that's a cool shot. How did they do that? You know, right. they're just, like, in it. <laughs> well, that's kind of cool. So you get to meet the stars of the shows and things like that, right? Do you get yeah. to do a one yeah. one session with them? Say that again? Do you get to do a one-on-one uh, photo session with them? Um, not necessarily, not, not on this. I was kind of just totally concentrated on filming. I did take some photos though of Dakota Shapiro, the lead that have been um, used for the film, but I am a part of like, uh, on this at least I was very involved. So 
I went to and gave advice to Ramin um, in the casting. So like I watched people audition, we talked about the characters and then um, he talked to them about the characters in like pre-rehearsal of the movie and I got to know them and, you know, builds kind of like a communication with them so that they're used to the camera, me behind the camera being in their face <laughs> a lot. Well, how many, um, how many actual uh, movies have you done? This is my first feature film as a cinematographer ever. Really? <laughs> I've worked on other feature films, but usually as a still photographer, meaning primarily focused on photographing the actors and the scenes and you and those images are used for like the poster and to publicize mm -hmm. the movie uh, but this is my first time as a director of photography a cinematographer on a feature film nice nice so does that mean you're going to be doing way more now i hope so <laughs> i love i love movies uh, shooting movies and I've done like a number of short films and I've done music videos and other things and I want to keep doing that, but I would love to shoot more feature films. They're so much fun. Oh, nice, nice. So what's in your future? Well, um, there are some projects that I'm working on with female filmmakers where they have these feature films that they want to make. And so we're making kind of short film versions of the story. Um, to get attention and funding to make the features. And they're both kind of, um, these two projects are dramas centered around women, um, very different than this movie, not horror, not thriller. <laughs> um, but I like all sorts of genres. So if they're interesting characters and it's well-written uh, and I like the person uh, to work with, then I'm down. So I have these two projects and then I have like, my own photography going on and um yeah well so if a, if a person wanted to get started and learn how to do what you do what type of guidance would you give them i would say the first thing i would say is to watch a lot of movies and that there's a lot of like free film education on the internet there's actually i think a website called no film school or something that has a lot of articles breaking down what cinematography is and like mm -hmm. composition and stuff. And there, yeah, there's just like a lot of material out there to read about how it works, what it means. So mm -hmm. starting there, watching movies and then kind of reaching out to people who you're interested in, um, especially like young people starting out or whatever and asking to work on their films like as a PA or taking photos if someone likes to take photos I really think that doing still photos on a film set teaches you so much because you get to be like next to the cinematographer and you can watch mm -hmm. everyone's work and learn a lot from it it's probably the most chill job on a set wow. <laughs> you're your own boss and you just like everything's already set up, the actors are acting, the lighting is up and you just take photos. Nice, nice. So obviously um, you have the background, you have the skills. How was your support system getting you started in this? On this film or just my career just in, in general? general? Your career. Um, I, yeah, I think like, I don't know if other artists can relate to this, but I'm my own uh, worst critic. So for me, I've always been harder on myself than anyone else has been on me. <laughs> so having support from other people is very motivating and affirming when I feel like, oh my gosh, am I actually good at this? I don't know. Um, I would say I feel really grateful, obviously, having the support of my family. I made this film with my father, who's supported my work for a while, but also having support from my peers, people my own age, some people mm -hmm. older, varying levels of experience, and teachers that I've had has really helped me um, because, because of their guidance, their support, and also... I just feel like it's really important to find community within your field, especially in film, which can be really competitive to find mm -hmm. other people who like love doing film and care about connecting with others as humans and fellow artists, because then you're like in it together um, right. instead of just like on your own fighting your way through. 
So how do you get gigs? How do you how do you get out there to get noticed? Um, I mean, for I feel like it's different for everyone. And for me, it's kind of funny because sometimes I've heard about something and then I've reached out to the person. But a lot of times people have just found me through my Instagram and through my reel and stuff. So I guess for me, I've always put myself out there even before I knew of like this idea of branding yourself or self-promotion. Like as a teenager, I just put my art online and stuff. And yeah, so I put my work out there so people have seen it. And then I've just made a lot of work, even stuff that didn't have much of a budget with my friends, whatever, and cutting it together and putting that on my site sharing those images on Instagram gives people a sense of the kind of work I do, which has helped right. me get jobs that were more than $0 budgets. <laughs> <laughs> so content is very important is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And I'm selective about, I mean, I, I'm able to be in terms of like, I'm lucky to live at home and have a support system and stuff, but I've been selective in terms of the kind of things that I work on that like align with like my values and my interests and stuff. And mostly actually work with female filmmakers um, because we're like the ones attracted to working with each other. They're like, oh, woman right. behind the camera. Yeah, I'm you know. the film and like, yeah. you know, um, but so I, I work on things that I care about that I find interesting. And then I feel like, people who find that interesting are attracted to my work and come to me. So, and I feel like everyone in film, like we all have our own voices and our own styles. So you mm -hmm. just have to find like what yours is. It doesn't need to be like one little thing, but there's space for everyone to make different types of stuff. So is it somebody out there that you would love to work with? An actor? Uh-huh, or, oh, or a director or? Yeah. Oh man, there are so many great actors and so many great directors. It's like hard to to wrap my wrap my head around who where even to start, you know. Um I don't know cuz part of me is like, oh, I would love to work with some of these great directors like Ryan Coogler, for example, who actually worked with, you know, on his first film Rachel Morrison, who's an amazing DP and he's actually always hired women to shoot his films, so that's really cool. But then I also feel like there are so many emerging directors and actors that are like not big yet that are going to be big. I don't know. I uh, there are too many great actors out there. <laughs> I think it would be cool to. I, I think both ways. I think it would be cool to work with someone ground level, but I think it'd also be awesome to work with someone that's already up there too. You know? Yeah, because great actors like make your work easy. You know, um, this movie, I Without a Face, Dakota Shapiro, I would say, is like an actor on the rise. And he's amazing. And it made my job easier because I'm filming someone who's great at acting. And then mm -hmm. Luke Cook, who's like been in Sabrina on Netflix. He's great and hilarious. And again, makes my job so much easier <laughs> working with talented actors. So I, th I will say there have actually been times that not as a cinematographer, I've been on set with some great actors. Like mm -hmm. I was an extra in the movie Inherent Vice, which starred Joaquin Phoenix, and I got to watch him act, and that was cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I've done, I've been like every job kind of on, on film. So <laughs> been an extra, uh, but I would never want to be an actor. It's what? not for me. Why? Um, uh, I, I think it's just that I love making images too much. Mm -hmm. I'm too controlling of that. And I prefer to like make images of other people. And I think I'm too self-conscious to be an actor. You know, they oh. have to be so vulnerable in front of a camera and yeah, yeah. It's a little scary. <laughs> you know, you're a whole different person when you're in front of the camera, you know, it's, it's not you anymore. You got to let go and that character sometimes take take a whole life of itself. So I can get that. I understand that. So, okay. Well, I am excited for you. I am very happy that you took the time to, to share with our listeners and viewers um, all the stuff that you're working on. It's awesome. Thank you. So and I hope people check out I Without a Face, which is 
I think a really fun movie. It's creepy, it's funny, it's dark, and has great acting. And I had a lot of fun shooting it. Well, I'm going to post some of the steals because the studio sent me over some steals as well. So I'll post some of the steals so people can get an idea of what type of work you actually do. And so they can put kind of the image with the person. And then I have your cool picture with you with behind the camera, you know. Oh, yeah. Really that that yeah. must be the one that our makeup artist took who took great photos on set. And that's like my favorite photo of myself. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well. Tara, thank you so much for being on the show. I hope to have you back again sometime. Uh, if you ever need us to help promote something that you're working on, we are here for you, girl. That's what we do. We stick together here at SKST Radio. And you will be able to see this, share it. Please go to our YouTube, like, and subscribe. And we're already friends on Insta. So that's even cool. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you so much for having me. Any last minute words that you want to give in the type of inspiration you want to give to someone? Um, I would just say to anyone interested in film or cinematography, if you don't have the access or resources um, to find your people and keep going and just do your thing and people will notice you don't have to um, go to film school or have lots of fancy gear to be a filmmaker. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you shoot me that email, the, the website, uh, I can put that on your on your page as well. So, OK, cool. Get that information out there to the people. All righty. Well, thank you. Nice meeting you. And I hope to see you again soon. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. You too. Good luck on your next project. Thank Until you. next week, everyone. Same time, same channel right here. SKST Radio. Bye bye.